In this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the Stream Deck or even other macro pads and how they can be used to enhance our productivity and workflow in 3D and other applications. Now, there's plenty of other videos that go over all the details um, of what the Stream Deck and, and things like it can do, but I will hit the highlights, show you some other options, and then also in Cinema 4D, show you how we can really take advantage of it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first of all, what is the Stream Deck? Well, I'm sure most people are familiar with the Stream Deck and typically it's what streamers use, you know, Twitch, YouTube, and other platforms um, to control their stream, whether it's to start and stop it, switch scenes, um, those types of things. However, it's also a really great productivity tool because as we'll see, pretty much any command that has a shortcut key um, you can program into the Stream Deck. So that can go well beyond streaming. And I use it um, for a lot of different purposes in my day-to-day -day work, whether uh, it's turning on the lights in my office, whether it's starting or stopping my audio, um, you know, those types of things. And I can even, of course, use it to, to stop uh, recording a video or continue recording. Uh, I have it set up to work with Zoom, OBS, um, you know, you name it, I have it so I can launch programs, go to different websites, all of that stuff. And even if you just wanted to use it for that type of stuff, I think a stream deck could be worthwhile. Now, um, you know, it is of course very expensive, uh, at a, you know, at least 150 us, although, um, like I said, I will kind of talk about potentially some other options. One of the things that makes the stream deck so powerful though is its software. And that is definitely something I would look into if you're considering alternatives. Now, the one thing I think that helps set the Stream Deck apart aside from the software is the screens because these screens can be customized. You can put your own icons on there um, and it makes it a little bit easier to remember what is on there as opposed to perhaps some of the other options. And if you were to just go to Amazon and Google MacroPad, uh, you will see a lot of different options. Obviously the Stream Deck like we're talking about. Um, here's a macro pad. Some of them, instead of just having switches, also have knobs. And that too can be very powerful, especially if you use other applications that could take advantage of it, like audio applications, uh, even Photoshop um, and After Effects. If you wanna be able to control different effects, that's the way. Um, you know, another use for it. Now, like I said, some of these have screens, some of them don't. This one has a little bit of a different screen, letting you know, I'm guessing kind of like what profile you're on. So that's really neat. Although at $80, it's not exactly cheap itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, plenty of different options. There's even keyboards that have macro pads too. Uh, but as I mentioned, you know, make sure you take a look at the software you can use to control these, whether it's just kind of Windows or if it comes with its own, uh, standalone piece of software, because like I said, I do think that's something that really helps set apart um, the uh, the Stream Deck. And so speaking of the software, right, Cinema 4D, we'll get there soon enough, but the software, like I said, is really configurable. So here's kind of my base layout here, where I have different options for programs and websites, media controls, whether I wanna turn the, the display on or off, um, different display settings I have set up. Uh, and I can even go into this other page I have where it's a lot of my um, recording options, um, OBS, Zoom, different scenes I have set up there. So obviously as you know, somebody who records a lot of videos, you know, I think it has a lot of good uses, but um, even outside of that, uh, there are plenty of other um, ways to use this. And you'll see on the, the right hand side here, not that I intend to go through everything, just a lot of the different options and programs that have built in um, ways to control it. So uh, there's definitely system. So this is kind of OS stuff where it's websites, hotkeys, opening, closing programs, multimedia, like I mentioned, but then other options as well, whether it's Twitter, um, OBS studio, and you can even come in here and search for different programs and get um, different options. And so voice mod, um, you know, like I said, I use it to control some of the lights um, in my office as well, some Govi lights I have. So a lot of really cool things you can do. And specifically, one of the things I wanted to talk about was Cinema 4D. Now, um, what's kind of cool is uh, when this first came out, um, you had to buy icons. 
Uh, but now you can actually just get free Cinema 4D icons. If you come in here, there's a whole bunch of different types of icons for different programs. I mean, anything from Cinema 4D, right? So a bunch of different icons that you can automatically, you know, kind of use in the Stream Deck uh, to, you know, Photoshop, right? Um, Affinity Photo, uh, After Effects. So pretty much any um, production software you would use, you will probably be able to find an icon pack on here now. Or if you don't mind spending a little bit of money, um, you can do that as well. And, and you don't have to have those icons. But once again, I think being able to see what each button is doing is really important. And so once you download those icons, you can create a new profile. And so here's kind of my Cinema 4D profile I have created. Um, you can see it's really just one page because um, I do think that's the most useful um, way to set it up. But once again, if you're really into it, by all means, go to uh, you know, you can set up multiple pages here. And what I've tried to do with this, and granted, these are the old icons, not the, the new ones. So if these look a little bit different, that is why. Um, but what I tried to do is find things that I was constantly having to go and find, you know, like my point mode, edge mode, polygon mode, there's no shortcut keys. Okay, so there isn't a way to switch between these. Now you can assign shortcut keys. And, you know, honestly, you can do pretty much everything I'm talking about with the Stream Deck if you get really good at shortcut keys. Uh, but sometimes this is a little bit easier. Uh, so you can, as I'll show you, um, we can set this up. Um, also switching between the different modes, the model, um, the object, animation mode as well, texture mode, okay? Whether or not you want to solo something, toggle on axis modification, which actually does have a um, shortcut key already assigned, but that is something, you know, you want to consider. And, um, you know, what's great is uh, these shortcut keys that I've already assigned stay here. And so what I have to do each time I install a new version of Cinema 4D um, is go through and recreate these hotkeys because these aren't your typical Cinema 4D hotkeys. So even if you just wanted to know how to set up a shortcut in Cinema 4D, I'll show you how to do that. But yeah, I'll show you how we can set up some of our different uh, modes here since, like I said, I think these are some of the most useful um, things to have a shortcut or hotkey for and that Cinema 4D doesn't come with one um, by default. So let's actually just kind of make this a bit smaller here. You can see my background there, hopefully not a big deal. But what you'll do is come over here, go to Window, choose Customization and choose Command Manager. Now, Cinema 4D has a whole bunch of different commands and it can be quite overwhelming. And so uh, you really have to sometimes kind of get creative with the commands you're looking for um, and also really pay attention because sometimes the icons don't match, right? If I'm looking for point mode here, that's not necessarily the icon I'm going to get. And so if I search for point, actually it turns out it is, but it's called point. It's not called point mode. Okay. We do get a little bit of information here. And what you'll notice is that there is no shortcut key assigned to it. So what I'm gonna do is just double check what I have assigned here, Control-Alt-P for points, and just do Control-Alt-P, and then do Assign. Now, Cinema 4D, because of the way it does shortcut keys, you can restrict uh, a shortcut to a specific part of your user interface, a specific window. Um, I don't think that's necessary, but you know, really, maybe if I was concerned, I would restrict this to, say, my perspective view. Um, which I'm going to assume is an option, but yeah, I'm not going to worry finding it. I'm sure it's there. So great. We've just assigned that. Why don't we do one or two more? I can do edge. So I'll search for that. All right. Edges. Okay. Not called edge mode, but at least the icon matches. So glad I was mistaken about that. And I have control alt E that way I can just click in here, do that, assign it. We've assigned that shortcut key. Great, and we'll do one more um, control alt M for model mode. Now, you might notice there is a little bit of a pattern in here. What I tried to do was find kind of a, a combination of keys. Cinema 4D really didn't have a lot of shortcut keys already set up for, and then put them in myself. So model mode, right, object mode, texture mode, you know, M, control alt M, O, T. Try to be as easy as possible. That way, if I did want to just use the shortcuts, you absolutely can. So let's find model control alt M. Type in model mode for model and see that. Once again, control alt M, assign, and no restriction. And so you may be going, okay, what does a stream back 
deck have to do with 3D? Why would I want one? Well, you know, now that we've set up those shortcut keys, it can really increase our productivity. And I've been saying that a lot, but what do I actually mean by that? Well, I mean, as we're actually modeling something, making it, we're going to be able to save ourselves a lot of time because rather than have to come up here to switch modes every single time we want to do something, whether it's to pull an edge, whether it's to you know extrude or bevel, whatever the case may be, switch to model mode or texture mode, any of those different shortcut keys or um, you know tools we may want to use, well, we're gonna be able to get to them quicker by using our Stream Deck. And so, you know, it can take a little bit of time to get used to this, just like any new kind of change in your workflow. But the idea is that over time, you're going to be saving a couple of seconds each time you go to switch modes, um, each time you want to turn on access modification or whatever else it is you set up the Stream Deck to do. And so over time, that uh, those little things you do and that you're doing them quicker add up. And that means you're going to be working faster. It's going to mean you're going to be working more efficiently and you're going to have more time to work on things as as well. And so it may not seem like a lot being able to just switch between these different modes really quickly, you know, as you're getting ready to do something else, moving your mouse um, to do something completely different, uh, but it all adds up. And that's where I think the Stream Deck or a macro pad or something like, like it really becomes um, a great tool to help uh, us work smarter, not harder. And so, yeah, I think it does make a lot of sense for 3D. I use it more for productivity than 3D myself, um, but I, I do use it for these types of things and other applications as well. So I would highly encourage you to look into it if it's something you might be interested in. If you find yourself doing a task over and over again, something that gets really repetitive. And there's definitely other ways you can enhance your workflow um, in Cinema 4D. You know, another way you could kind of do something like this is if you're finding yourself using the same tools over and over, like some of the Access Center tools, well, put them in your user interface. Um, in some of my other videos, my other versions of Cinema 4D, I actually take a lot of uh, the Access tools, Access Center, Center Access 2, and then and move their icons, you know, just right above my object manager. Well, that's something else I would obviously put in my stream deck as well if that's something I was going to use. But even just having them right above my object manager so I don't have to go all the way across my screen and go through two or three different menus, that can make a big difference too. And so I really think you can just uh, start to figure things out a bit more if you think about what repetitive tasks you can speed up, whether it's shortcut keys, whether it's moving around things in the user interface, or whether it's getting something like the Stream Deck. That will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. Let me know if you like these types of videos where I go into kind of more 3D adjacent or, or hardware type things. So uh, leave a comment if you could, like and subscribe as well. And until next time, take care.